emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Shut up and sit down. So let's get this last leg assembled. Here's the others that I've done off camera, just to give you an idea of what they look like. Okay, so lovely detail on them. So I've just got the last one to do. So we'll pop that together now, just to give us an idea of what we're looking at. So let's have a peek around and on the instructions we are doing leg B because I've already built legs A. Alright. So that's what we're up to building this little bits and pieces together from page five onto page six. Okay, so there's the upper part, the hinges, the foot, the pads, the pivot points, all the way along with various checkpoints. And we will end with all four legs built. Okay, so if you have bought one of these already, then you can join in. Uh, if you haven't, then obviously pop along and grab one. Uh, so we want part number D14, which is just there. And I'll just pop these off the sprues and drop them on my bench. D10. Like so. And D24, which is over the way there. I'll just make sure that I don't drop this one on the floor. Just like that. Okay. And then we can go back and just get that piece off of there. Like so. Quick little smooth out of any nubbage. Like that. And we're nice and smooth there. And just a quick run around the edges. And that will pick up any other bits and pieces. So we can drop that in like so and spin that round and then turn the piece around and there's a little hole just there that we want to put that pin in. Just in there. Like that. Okay. Yeah, so we can grab that. I'll just put my mat on there so that I can see against the logo there where my completed pieces are. So I'll grab D1, which is over here. Just fractionally away from the piece, enough for the sand just to have a tiny nub to bite. I do cut a little bit closer than most, but then because I know on this build the extent of the weathering and things, you know, if I do get it a little bit peat on, I'm not gonna fret too much because of what's being covered with the paint job 
So then they just press into place and just make sure that she still pivots like so. And then it tells you just to check that you've got the orientation correct, which we want it at about five o'clock. Like so. Okay. Over onto the mighty page six. So we now start getting on to the little hooky parts, as I call them. And these are the parts of the mechanism or the hinge mechanism for the legs that actually move around when Cat is walking. It just gives it a little dimension like that. And there's just a nub there. So I'll get my safety knife and give that a little scrape just enough to get the edge there's it like that yeah okay and then that hooks just in there like so okay like a clapperboard take one take two that sort of thing Okay, happy days, and then we want to get piece number D2, it's a shame that there isn't a piece that's R2 and D2 that join to this, get what I did there, yeah I'll get my coat, a little sand, and uh, or you can just smooth any little imperfections out as we go around and then you've got a really tiny little piece coming off now so you might want to cut this off over your bench it's this little piece here D23 and you've got to be really careful with it because it is tiny so nip just there and then it's under gated at the back so I'm just gonna ping that against me cutting mat so that I don't lose it and that little piece then hooks into this little L shape excuse my twitches if I do twitch but it's a bit of a bind to get in place but once it's in it's in like that okay strange little piece but it's in there Whew. yeah i speak from experience this is the man who spent quite a while on his knees on his floor looking for one of them that pinged off earlier on and there was a few a few dagnamic moments there but we we found it and it wasn't stuck between my toes this time it was just by the wheel of me chair like that and just go all the way around little smooth around like that then that piece has got a wider cut out on one side of the circle see it's quite wide there whereas the other side's narrow and that cause is because it bridges the wider part there and holds that little piece into place that we just slotted in like so okay another piece done we then want a retaining pin which is in the, the box there just off of shot A number 28 which is this round disc and these are the locating pins that hold the top mechanism together okay 
just a tiny little rub with a sander get any raised parts off oh nearly see wow one of Festa's better reactions there yeah. uh, I don't think I'll get the phone call to become the next England goalkeeper but hey you know <laughs> it's worth a try so we want to put this together so that this part here this tiny little pin that's sticking up actually goes in this little groove and what I have found when I've been putting these together is I just hook the first bit in and make sure it's actually moving the disc before I put the pin in on the hinge like so See, there's a groove on the back that one piece is on and then I put the pin together click it into place and you'll end up then with this part here that moves and this part see like that yeah and that's what you should have for that piece of leg and it will ask you to check the movement in here okay and that's what I've just done with that piece see is just match that movement like a pendulum in a clock there you go see so I'll be happy with that we can now move down onto the parts of his foot now so I'm just going to chop the two halves of which are 18 and 19 respect respectfully so we'll just pop them off see and then we'll have the head and then the four legs will be built this episode and then the next episode will be the body of the cat uh, I'll just drop the, the ring off for the paw as well as I call it whilst I've got this piece in my hand okay so that's the foot pad this is the body of these paw or paw as I call it and then you've got four little pieces that run along here D15 which are the movable pads or toes if you want to call them toes of the cat's foot so there's four of those to come off and then we can sand those and and give them a little finesse and get them in place and then we can attach the foot to the lower part of the leg so I'll just put that to one side quickly go round the disc of these paw like so one of those just move them a bit And then come along with the halves now what I've been doing on these halves is I've been actually putting a little bit of uh, plastic magic cement on there uh, no particular reason it's, it's just that I wanted to close up the seam in the foot as much as I can that's the only reason it's going on it's got nothing to do with it's not joining or anything it's just a personal preference of mine because I'm going to go around and try to lose some of the seams that are apparent and I just thought that would make it a little easier to do so but I mean the philosophy is still there they would still if you're not using glue and just snapping it together it would still do that but because I'm just going along and trying to get rid of some of the seams as best as we can that's why I'm doing it okay you don't have to if you don't want to that's 
that. And again, these just rest in place as well, but they're actually pivotable. So with the full movement of the legs, you know, these, these actually pivot up and down as well. So you can really get quite in with your, your pose of the cat or the AT, AT, whichever variant you're building. And you can really sort of display it with some nice options. See, and that is press fit, but all of those move, see. How cool is that? See, because when I come round and do a bit of dry brushing later, I'm going to be putting some scratches and dings and all sorts of things. So although I'm denubbing, I'm not too worried about the overall smoothness because this is in a quarry, so it's going to be treading on rocks and all kinds of detritus. So I'm expecting there to be damage so if you're doing a super glossy sort of mint condition one then you won't want any nubs visible or anything like that but for my own personal preference i'm not really that concerned because i know the finish i'm going for then tells you to check the foot to make sure everything's correct which it is all your toes move as they should end of. Now you've got to be careful when you orientate this and I'll show you why in a minute. So we'll get the lower part which was D12 and 13 which are these two pieces. So I'll just nip them off like so. There's one. There's number two. And I'll show you why it's important. I'll just sand, sand these quickly. Still haven't oiled my chair. I'll do that for part two. Sorry, Fox. Like so. Now, you want this piece here with the raised section to come in from the back with the hinge at the front. Now the easiest way I remembered it is there's a hole on the back here and you want that hole to be on the same size as this little groove. Okay, because you've got a piston that comes from here to here that you fit in a moment. Okay, and the other piece doesn't have that hole in it as you can see. So that's the easiest way. Now what you can do is what I chose to do so that if you really aren't certain, go along and find the piece for the piston, which is D46. He says optimistically looking for it. There it is. Right over in there. Like so. Let's just try and grip that whilst I'll give it a quick bite with a sander. Like that. There you go. And again, I'll just put a little bit of the old plastic glue in there because it's a tiny little piece. And although it's a resistance fit, I don't want it to fly out. So that's in now. Hop over to part number A30, which is one of these pistons. Give that a nip. Like so. And before you join both halves of the leg together, you've actually then got the piston in place. So then it can only go one way, can't it? See, and if you're not sure, like me, just give it a little dab. Preferably in the hole. 
pick up your piston drop it in there first and then just lean it over and press it in place like that okay and I tend to just centrally now you know you're orientated the correct way with the leg all right that's what I did I found it a little bit easier and then I could assemble the knee joint like so and then drop the front piece in place just like that boom see and then find piece number D11 which is over here little sandy pops and we are nearly done on this leg like that and then you're putting this piece in just at a slight angle nothing special just like that okay and then you've got some little edge trim to go in. So piece is D25. Which are these ones with the little shovel head shape at the bottom. It's the way that I remembered them. One of them. Like so. quick little dress up with the sander like that now some of the pieces I'm deliberately not smoothing down purely and simply because I know what I'm weathering and I'm going to go over this once it's at its primer and undercoat on there. And I'm going to use the sanding stick to bring through some of the under layer of paint. So, again, the ultimate in smoothness isn't a concern for me because this is a piece of plant equipment. And it's going to be, yeah, a bit battered. The easiest way to do it is if you go on the a search engine um, or you know if you're traveling up and down the motorway and you see a bit of a digger going on beside the road just have a look at it and look how beaten up some of the edges are and how abraded and gunged and scratched and gorged and yeah you'll get what I mean right we now want the other two filler pieces which were number 22 and number 21 so let's pop 22 off and leave 21 on the sprue just for a moment now these are snap-on pieces um, but at this stage because you're not putting this section of the leg in yet until the very end of the instructions I found it's probably an idea to glue these on because they don't really click into place or be held into place until the front part goes on and yeah uh, yeah it just doesn't seem to stay in place for me you see and when the other part goes on and presses against it then it holds it in but at this stage you're not putting these panels on the leg right away until the very end when you're joining it to the body so if you're anything like me you'll lose them so all i've been doing is i've been using a bit of the old plastic magic on the tab letting it go for about five seconds and then just dropping it on like that 
and then obviously give it a little jiggle just to make sure you've not got no capillary reaction going on down there and that's how I've been doing them on my legs and all of them have stayed on so far so bear that in mind if you don't want to lose them don't be shy put a little bit of plastic magic on there but just obviously make sure that you're only putting it on that tab because you don't want to glue the leg solid at this stage because it's not going to move then is it and yeah so just this little tab yeah this little rectangle that's the glue surface nothing else right hey and this is a 10 second glue so by the time i finish rattling off and rambling do 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 yeah you can then pop it on and it will bite just enough to hold it on but also just enough to keep that knee joint moving like that yeah and that is a leg built that was easy wasn't it so what we've now got is we've got his head and we've got four legs going on. How's that? Yeah. And then when we come on to the next episode, we'll be doing the body, which is all the mechanisms underneath. Probably do a little bit of drilling as well. Get me drill out. Ready in anticipation to drop some lights down. Now, if you're not lighting yours, what I can do actually is if I just get the assembly done, I'll, ch I'll change my mind there. If I just get the assembly done, for those that are not lighting it, you can skip the lighting episode and then come back on another episode. But for those of you that want to light yours, then obviously watch the lighting episode. I'll film it where I'm doing all the, all the lighting and modifying, hopefully in one episode for you. So I'm going to end there. I'm going to thank you all for tuning in. Brilliant. I've loved your company. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. Um, if you haven't got your kit, pop over to the sponsor, emodels.co.uk. Go in there. Do a search for Star Wars or Bandai, however you want. You can get an AT-AT. You can get an AT-ST. You can get whatever you want. And if you fancy joining us for part two with your own kit, I look forward, I shake your hand, and uh, look forward to seeing you next episode. Bye-bye for now.